Welcome to this quick start guide for Parallels Rats. My name is Paul Fisher, Senior Pre-Sales Engineer here at Parallels. So what are we looking at today? Uh, basically, you're going to run you through the steps to get you up and running uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, who's this video for? What do we need? Some prerequisites. There's some steps that I've already done, um, which we can class as prerequisites. Pretty simple. Uh, we'll go through those. Uh, we'll go through the install steps, and then I'll just kind of go over a, a deployment diagram, just to give you a sense of what we're going to end up with. Um, and then we'll actually go through the install, um, so we can see that uh, in the video as well. So. Yeah, basically this is a video for, for anyone who's interested in deploying Parallels RAS. Um, we're going to do two types of deployment. Um, deployment one is what we tend to call an all-in-one AOI. Um, and it, it's basically all the roles that we need on one server, and that can quickly get us up and running and, and be able to test and, and get, have a good feel for what Red Application Server can do for you. Um, so yeah, essentially we've got the secure gateway connection broker and we'll enable the the RDS role Microsoft RDS role and put our various components on there as well um, and that gives us everything we need to, to to do some testing the second deployment is to expand that out a little bit basically add in an additional server um, so that server will have the gateway um, the, the connection broker again and, and this the session host role um, and that allows us then to they're highly available. We will place um, something, uh, some additional component in front of that called the HALB, um, but uh, that's pretty straightforward. So first half of the video, uh, just to get you up and up and running, if you want to expand it. And a lot of customers have the kind of deployment two here as a, in a production uh, environment, um, so it's certainly usable for, for that. So what do we need? Uh, sort of in terms of prerequisites, uh, well, we need a hypervisor or cloud platform or physical servers. Um, we, we tend to work with hypervisors or on, on cloud platforms. Today, in this video, this guide will be using um, a hypervisor, Hyper-V uh, in particular. Um, but we can support Azure and, and, and AWS uh, as well um, from a cloud platform perspective. So yeah, as mentioned, we're going to do an all-in-one deployment. Um, so we're going to deploy um, or use in that scenario one Windows Server, Server 2022, uh, but 2012 you know, through to 2022 are also supported. And then uh, in the second one, second highly available deployment, again, I've kind of mentioned this already, but uh, we're going to deploy an additional server. So we'll have two, um, and then we'll deploy the two RAS HALB, which are Linux appliances and they they low balance the, the gateways but we'll, we can get into a bit more of that when we look at the the diagram so what do we need um oh, this is what i've already completed really deployed the two times windows 2022 servers on my hyper v server um, from an iso i've domain joined them you know perform windows update i've installed some base applications on already um, so yeah, a couple of things like Chrome and Edge and Notepad, LibreOffice, just uh, throwing some applications on there and that'll just show us how we can, well I can then show you how we can deploy and publish applications uh, in the video as well. I've downloaded the Parallels RAS installer um, and there's the, the sort of direct link to, to download those and also I've downloaded the HALB, latest version of the HALB. So the steps that we're going to do. Um, first of all, install Parallels RAS on our first server, which is QS RAS1, um, quick start RAS1, we've labeled that. Um, then we'll be configuring the RDS role, that's done through the console, so we're adding the role in um, directly to the console and that will do um, any Microsoft, or enable any Microsoft roles that we need as well. We'll create the SSL certificate through Let's Encrypt, we will publish some applications, publish the desktop, test the, the connectivity on the internal network then we'll look at configuring internal and external um, dns um you can call split split dns uh, so essentially externally dns results on our firewall that's natted through to to this um, new server that we've created uh, and in, internally it's resolving to the to the same place um, we'll configure the firewall we'll test 
connectivity externally. Um, then we'll configure the second server. Um, so we'll add in high availability, that second scenario that we've talked about. So essentially we're adding in a, a second server, which is a, an additional connection broker, additional secure gateway. We'll enable the RDS role on there as well. And then we'll put it behind the, uh, the helps essentially. So this is what it looks like from a diagram perspective. Um, and this is, well, I suppose if we look at the top one, uh, QS RAS1, that's the all in one. So that's scenario one, um, you know, it kind of all self contained on, on one virtual machine. So secure gateway, connection broker, and the RDSH server. Uh, and then this is, I suppose, ultimately the deployment two scenario um, with high availability where we have the HALBs sitting in front and load balancing the secure gateways. Um, slight note, we don't need anything to load balance the connection brokers. They're automatically highly available as soon as we've got two or more. Okay, so let's get in to the deployment. So now we're going to deploy the first server, QS RAS1, which is basically setting up the, the farm and first site. So, uh, so you're going to include the, the secure gateway and the connection broker and the RDS role on this server, but um, we're so I guess doing a lot at this step. To this server that I've set up, um, and we well yeah I suppose it it's a server that has been domain joined. Um, you know, in theory, I've done Windows updates because I'm a good boy and installed some applications uh, as well just to so I can quickly publish those. Uh, I've also downloaded the installer, um, so the RAS install, so it's 19.3, so we'll just go ahead and, and run this up. And what we're going to install is what I would call an all-in-one setup, which is, which is good for testing, good for POCs. Um, we're going to install, and I'll just choose the, the top option, but basically we'll install the connection broker, the secure gateway and the RDS host role all on one server. Of course, that comes with the, the, the management console and PowerShell and the web web console as well. Um, but yeah, I'd normally just choose the top. It goes over any firewall rules, Windows firewalls it's going to do. We can choose to add those in automatically. Do you want to choose single sign-on or not? Um, this It's essentially um, for sign into the console so it's nothing to do with end user single sign on it's just signing into the, the console um, and because we need to reboot it you need to reboot to install the single sign on uh, but we need to reboot anyway so i'm just gonna say yes so I'll give that a second starting up the services So yeah, it does ask you at this point, do you want to open up the, the management console? I tend to un uncheck that because we need to reboot. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And Okay. So we just need to give that a little bit of time. And we'll uh, just bring over this uh, this window so I'm, I'm installing on on hyper-v so i've just got a single host um, and it's this machine so, so i've got other stuff other demo labs but we'll just uh, have a quick look at this and um see if it's rebooted which it seems to have done so let's go back and try and connect Okay, so now we should find in our start menu that we've got, uh, well, it was a parallels folder for the entirety, but in there's the web console, there's the remote application, uh, the application based console. So we'll open that. Localhost, really friendly name. I can choose single sign on, so it's picking up the Windows account that I used to sign in. Now, 
th at this point it's asking us for our my uh, my parallels account a business account if you haven't got one i always recommend just creating it from here registering it from here um, if you just go to the the website itself uh, my.parallels.com you can often end up with a consumer account and you then can't uh, can't use it here uh, so let's see if i can remember my password now oh Don't, um sorry one second So I'm just signing in this case. If I've got existing keys, I can browse for them there. So if I've got like a production key, I could, or I can just choose activate trial version. So we say okay. And it's just telling us here now, don't, you know, we'd rather you not change the IP address, especially with the broker. Um, doesn't doesn't like that. Keep the host name. So, you know, either statically assign the IP address or make sure it's got a re reservation. So that's the install done and I've licensed it with a, a trial key. We can see the information down here. Um, but if you look at what we've got, if we head over to the site, I've got a secure gateway and a connection broker, both reporting as okay, so that's good. Next step would be to add, again, this server in as a session host server. Um, so I'm just gonna go with local host and that will um, re resolve it for me, saying it's not got the RDS role installed. Um, so we'll go next, it's going to install the RDS role, probably should have done that We've ahead of time just to save a bit of time, but anyway, um, this bit's going to add in the what user groups are allowed access, remote desktop user access, authenticated users is fine. I'm not going to do any profiling at this point, but that's where we can set up the FS logics. And again, just to save time, I'm not going to apply any optimizations, but here we can disable services and tasks and um, visual tweaks uh, just to improve the performance of of the host session host we can do that in the template world as well um, so at this point what it's doing is it's, it's copying the msi over that we used to install if it was a separate server you know not the same server it would copy it over and execute it remotely because we're installing on a self now and that's why UAC kind of popped up at provide credentials again. Normally it would just um, sort of use the credentials that I've signed in with and, and do it remotely. Um, but yeah, that's, that's doing the, the, the role install. Um, so it's putting in the RD agent, uh, the RAS agent, alongside enabling the Microsoft role as well. And that's always a, an important point. You know, we still require Microsoft licensing as to all our competitors. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's only fair that we uh, pay pay Microsoft, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's done. You can say okay there and finish. Right, uh, I think I'm gonna go and head it and open up the management console straight away. And connect now, now if I head over to the site straight away we should see we've got a session host there Not, they're all the same server so as I say all in one um, there so the next thing to do really is to, to do some publishing um, so if I go into the publishing section click on add gonna do some applications first you know we're publishing from a session host we can do virtual desktops and remote PCs I'm going to choose installed applications and this will uh, basically look at the start menu, provide um, a list of available applications. I can just go through um, choosing as many as I want. I will just choose that folder, uh, edge. Yeah, pretty much will do, I think. So then we can go next. We want to enable or disable or in maintenance mode. 
and then we go next again get an overview of what we're publishing and from from where but we just got the one server in this this scenario so okay that's done and then i'm gonna publish one more thing which is a desktop session host uh, I, I always do this by by default you can you can choose all servers in all hosts in site all servers in site it'll work because we just got one um, but if you end up with multiple ones it'll just load balance across all of them um, so yeah by kind of habit i use uh, a selector host pool and that means if i added another server at a later date it'll automatically be published and, and load load balanced uh, so we'll get this a name and go with that enabled click apply so that's that's done you know i could come in and change my filtering but by default we've got kind of everyone can get access um so i don't need to do much more there and let's go back to my desktop qras qs ras qs ras one So yeah, basically I'm going to connect now. So I've typed in the, the host name. Obviously we can set up friendly DNS and we'll have a little look at that shortly. But I'm going to proceed. Uh, it's still secured. It's just, you know, it's a bit of a mismatch on the, um, the certificate name. Uh, and let's go and log in here with a Kind of use standard user account. Um, I'm just going to use the browser just for ease of um, demonstration. But yeah, we can see all the applications that we've we published, um, and I can go ahead and click on the desktop or the applications. And we're logging in. So yeah, that's kind of kind of it really is how, how quickly you know, we can set up RAS and publish some applications and, and um, get users connected to a desktop uh, through the browser so at this stage we're going to configure the SSL certificate okay so next we're going to configure the SSL certificate um, and there's the DNS for that as well. Now I've already gone to my, my GoDaddy account and I've, I've set up some DNS externally and I've pointed that to my my firewall and I've um, natted port 80 through currently to to this this gateway, effectively this, this server here. Um, I'm going to set up the internal DNS as well. Uh, so if I bring up my domain controller uh, under this DNS here, so you know, yeah, effectively setting up the split DNS. So we've got external, internal, um, and if I create a new A record and I called it, what did I call it? Quick start. Yeah, I called it Quick Start. Dot our desktop. Dot UK, and the IP address will be this server, which is. this so let's copy that go back to my dns server set that okay i guess i can test from here as well so ping quick start dot this dot uk cool all right so i've got the the, the dns internally and externally um, configured so let's go back to my our QRAS server. Oops. Get rid of that. And then we go to certificates and we're going to do let's encrypt. So yeah, I'd say it's important with let's encrypt that um, we 
have port 80 open as a requirement of let's encrypt and that's natted through it can go to the halbs so i could have done this at a later stage um, or i can do it now and, and just point it the firewall through to rather than the halb slash the the, v, the vip uh, virtual ip um, we're just i'm just going to i've just pointed it straight to this gateway um, so i'll just put in, in this for the auto renewal say okay and this is quick start dot our desktop dot uk let's call it that yeah let's increase that a little bit uh, common name is that um As. So we just basically click on save there. And click apply and we can see this is now it's now issuing. So let's encrypt's doing its thing, which is you know looking up the DNS and kind of come back to um, resolve back to this server publicly, you know, via the firewall, etc. Okay, so that's now issued for us. Um, and we don't have to do anything now, really. We don't, you know, have to go into the gateway, although we can, and, and sort of change and say, oh, we need to use this, this certificate. Um, I just leave it as, as default, and it, you can see it says all matching usage. Um, so it will just match the certificate, so we can have multiple certificates, you know, different different FQDNs, etc., and we'll automatically match. So. Now, um, if I come here and we'll just open a new window, go to quick start dot our desktop. There we can see uh, we've connected now, and that's you know, over SSL. It's, there's no certificate errors. So I guess the next step is to um, install and configure the QS RAS2 server, so my second server, um, and then we will, you know, I suppose once we've got that set up, we can then look at doing the, the HALB configuration and, and that will allow us to low balance the, the secure gateway. So currently uh, what we've completed is we've set up QS RAS1, got the secure gateway, the connection broker role and the RDS host on that server. We're going to do the same on the, on the second server. Now what it's quite, I suppose, tempting or natural to do is to head over to the second server that I've got here and run the same MSI on that, on that server. That would be wrong. That would be essentially create you a second farm, not join this server to the initial farm. So what we do is you basically go to the, um, the first server and uh, open the console up um, and I tend to start on the connection brokers because actually when we add in the connection broker you can see here that um, it'll also enable the HTML5 gateway so I want to do quick start RAS2 dot our desktop.uk, keep it all the same, keep it nice and neat. So it's resolved the IP address. And yes, as I said, I want to install the gate, secure gate with the connection broker, enable the HTML5 web client as well. So we'll do that. Now it's gonna check and see if the you know there's any roles on there or the connection broker roles on there. We know it isn't, so I can just speed up things and hit install. Provide an administrator account, local administrator, or domain admin. I 
Okay, so that's done. We can click done and we say OK. And as always, we have to click apply there. Um, so let's go to our connection brokers and let's just check to see if it's rebooting because it should be rebooting. And yes, it is. So I'll give that a second to come back up. And hitting refresh, we've got a good status of OK. And we can go and look at the secure gateways. So again, that server's been put in there and we've got a good status of OK. So the final step of adding this server is to go um, to the RD session host, click on add. Now I tend to just do it manually. Obviously you can browse um, Active Directory as well. So let's put that on the list. We want to add the firewall rules, install the Microsoft RDS role, enable desktop experience, reboot. Just leave it in the default group. And I'll leave authenticated users there for the remote desktop user group. Obviously you can change that. Um, not at this point going to con uh, configure FS logics, which is roaming profiles. We'll just leave it as default. Um, and just for quickness, I'll uh, I'll not do the optimization. So we'll give that a minute. <laughs> Okay, so that's almost uh, well, it's rebooted. It's almost come back up, um, but we can move on. Let me say OK. Click Apply. And we can check the status there. And it's uh, green and OK. So because I've... Um, install the same applications on there um, and when publishing these I've published from that default group that second server now will when when we try and make a connection will automatically be low balanced so it'll automatically low balance um, across those two servers and that's that's based on the low balancing rules here and now we're ready to configure the halbs so we're going to have two halbs in this setup um, so that they're highly available. Halbs are active passive and we're going to configure those now. Okay so um, <coughs> what we need to do obviously first is to download the Halb appliances. You can do that from the, the main download link here. Um, so yeah I'm running a Hyper-V so I need the VHD, so just simply download that. Obviously I've already done this, um, but if I bring over my Hyper-V server, let's connect to this. Um, now obviously I've got lots of other things running um, along with the, the, the quick start, the, the servers that we're using. Um, but I'm going to create two new servers. So we'll create a virtual machine and we're kind of creating an empty machine really. So let's call this QS Halb 1, quick start Halb 1. Generation 1, 2, or 8 we'll go for. Configure the networking. And at this point I'm going to say attach hard disk later. Click finish and do that again uh, QS Halb QS Halb 2 same settings attach disk later finish and then if we had to, well, copy this 
and go to my virtual machines. We should have valve one and two. So copy the disk there. Copy again and copy the disk into the second one. Then we can head back here. Settings. Browse to the hard disk, and this is one, so hard one, select the disk. Okay, and then we'll do the same on the other one. Browse, hard two. Okay, and we can start them both up. And then I'm going to connect to the console. Let them go through their initialization. Okay. Um, now I'd recommend you go with a static IP, uh, assign that, but just for, again, for ease and quickness, I'm going to go with DHCP. And let's get the other one going as well. So DHCP. And we'll just minimize that. Let it finish doing its uh, initialization and install. Okay, going to skip that bit. And that's that's ready now. Um, just making note of the uh, the IP address, and we'll just get the second server in the same state. Okay. So now we need to head over back to our console. So I'm back on QRAS one, and uh, head to the halbs. Okay, so yeah, we go to helps and we create a new one and we'll just call it, well, you, you, know, you can have internal, external helps, um, call it default. Uh, public address is quick start dot oh, desktop dot UK. Um, the virtual IP, so this is the IP that will float between the, the two helps. That we've got and this is what we're we're pointing our, our our dns at you know or through the firewall we're gonna um nat it through to to this virtual ip um so i have found a free ip address so we put in that information whoops uh yeah, so we want it to do the standard gateway and the uh, you know, port 80, 443, effectively. Um, and we want to load balance it to those two gateways on 80 and those two same gateways on 443. Um, I'm doing pass through, but we can do SSL offloading at, at the halves if we like. And then this is where we add in the halves. So it's it's picked up some halves from, from my other farms, but these are the two that we just created. So say OK. And then we can select the next one. And then we can go finish. Click apply. And we can check out the status and everything's status screen okay. So that's that's good. So okay, so what I'm gonna do now is update my DNS. So if I bring over my domain controller and bring up my 
DNS. I want to find quick start. And I want to change that to 25. Okay. Quick start dot our desktop dot UK. Let's ping that. So that's picking up 25. Okay, so now if I start a new, do it incognito, and if we do quick star.rdesktop.uk, that's now re re uh, resolving to the new IP address. And um, yeah, so now going through, through the halbs, so that's it, the, the halbs are deployed and working. Uh, obviously we've only updated the uh, internal DNS. We need to do, do the change on the firewall so that the firewall is, is, is natting through to this virtual IP now rather than what we did in the, uh, in the first instance and nat it through to just one of the, uh, one of the gateways. <coughs> 